Uh, it's a pleasure for me to announce the next speaker, which is uh, Valeria Bracchini uh, from CNS Spin in Italy. And she's going, about, uh, she's going to talk about high performance, low cost iron based conductors for high field magnets. Valeria, can you hear us? Yes, sir. can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Please okay, share I'm your screen. Share yeah. My screen. Okay, we can see uh, your screen now. Perfect. Okay, can, can you can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Please. Yes, I can see. Okay. Okay, so thank you uh, very much, uh, Mikael, and uh, good morning, uh, afternoon, evening to everybody. Uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me um, here to talk about our work on iron-based uh, coated conductors. Uh, first of all, uh, my acknowledgement to uh, my co-workers from CNR, from University of Genova, uh, Tor Vergata, Roma Trepoli Tecnico di Torino, and from Enea and Eni. Um, this work um, on iron-based superconductors, which uh, I will present, has been performed within um, um, uh, the project uh, PRIN Iviscus, which is funded by our Ministry of University and Research, and within the joint research agreement uh, on fusion uh, with ANI, between ANI and CNR. Um, this is the outline of my talk. I will briefly introduce the iron-based superconductors, why they can be interesting for applications, and uh, I will discuss the feasibility of coated conductors, especially uh, of the um, iron-selenium-tellurium phase. Um, I will then um, I will then uh, briefly describe our studies on different coated conductors templates, and then I will uh, uh, talk about the investigation of pinning mechanisms and the role of defects for improving the, uh, the critical current capability of uh, such materials. Um, okay, we, we, we already saw uh, several times in this morning as well, uh, iron-based superconductors can be interesting for high field applications. Uh, here we have, uh, uh, sorry, I'm looking for the, okay. Um, here there is um, uh, upper critical field of this, some of these phases. Of course, they are in. They have high upper critical field and high reversibility field, and they are interesting in this window at low uh, temperatures. Um, this is a window applicability for iron-based superconductors uh, compared with other technical superconductors. Um, we 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 have um, windows for fusion and for high energy physics. And another um, positive uh, aspect of such materials is the cost. Costs are, are quite interesting, especially if compared with uh, niobium-13 and uh, HTS. And uh, as we have heard this morning from Dr. Melhem, um, costs are quite uh, important for uh, this kind of applications. Uh, we know that, uh, okay, I, IBS have, uh, we have said high critical fields, high uh, critical current density and very flat up to uh, high fields. Um, intragrain JC is high um, and uh, we have a very good intrinsic pinning in these phases. Uh, still, there is improvement that we can achieve also with artificial pinning. Um, what uh, um, we know already that uh, misorientation dependence of JC is quite uh, um, quite uh, positive uh, because uh, in plane misorientation alignments of grains below nine degrees uh, is not an obstacle for the current flow and uh, above 20 degrees still we have metallic behavior. Therefore, uh, the situation is much uh, much more positive than uh, compared with uh, Rebco, for example, and highly textured templates are not uh, needed as it is needed for, for Rebco uh, materials, and therefore powdering tube um, and uh, low-cost coating conductors are actually possible. 
um, quantum conductors have been fabricated. We have seen in uh, something uh, just uh, now from uh, Quali. Um, Quali. Uh, so um, they have been fabricated on commercially available templates such as IBAD and Rabbits. Very good results on Rabbits uh, for the one arm phase. Um, IBAD uh, is very good for the one to two, and fields on technical substrates are as good as on single crystals. Very recently, we saw uh, from uh, Kazuma Zaida these uh, good results on 1111 uh, um, coated conductors on IBAD with very high uh, critical currents as well. Um, so, uh, actually, Coated conductors uh, of iron based can be advantageous over uh, Rabco coated conductors. Uh, here I'm, I'm showing the two um, Rabco templates. They are technologically quite complex. Uh, they, uh, it is needed a strong texture, either from the uh, substrate uh, or from all the um, buffer layers, which are needed to protect the phase from chemical contamination or and to ensure a perfect match with the phase. Uh, for iron-based superconductors, it is uh, different. It is possible to think about simpler uh, templates with much weaker texturing with uh, maybe no buffer or very simple buffer. And this is due also from the fact that misirritation angle is not such cru so crucial, but also because uh, we deposit without oxygen and the position temperature is much, much lower. Uh, so what we did, we tried several things. We tried to grow on uh, uh, metallic substrate. We used uh, um, commercial invar alloy to produce our biaxial bi textured uh, tapes. Uh, we obtained films which were textured uh, both in and out of plane. Uh, but uh, what we observed is that uh, when you use nickel alloys, we have a small contamination of nickel throughout the phase, and this suppresses superconductivity. Therefore, we actually need uh, a buffer layer, uh, even if simple. So we tried several other things. We tried to uh, deposit on partially oriented alloy with randomly oriented native chromium oxide. And this can work. Uh, the 1-1 one -one phase grows self-oriented. Uh, along the C-axis, um, we have a critical temperature which increases by increasing the thickness of, of uh, the buffer layer, but JC is low, of course, because we have weak links due to the fact that uh, um, grains are misoriented um, um, uh, throughout the film. Uh, we tried also uh, simple rabbits, uh, textured um, Syria, uh, on nickel tungsten. In this case, we have good uh, in and out of plane texturing. We have a good JC um, and uh, uh, TC increases by increases the, increasing the thickness of the block layer, therefore, um, of the buffer layer, sorry. Therefore, what we need, we need the actually texture uh, buffer layer, let's say up to 10 degrees, and uh, we need a certain thickness, at least 300 uh, nanometers. <clears throat> Our colleagues in Enea, they tried, they explored the possibility to use chemical solution deposition to grow buffer layers uh, suitable for the deposition of uh, iron selenium tellurium uh, films. This uh, technique is simple um, and uh, also easily scalable. Uh, they tried a zirconium doped ceria and also a bilayer lanthanum zirconium oxide plus. Um, a zirconium doped Syria. And uh, um, they were able to grow um, uh, layers uh, with, with a very sharp orientation and very, very low roughness down to one uh, nanometer. And we tried to deposit on such, uh, on such templates and we obta obtained iron selenium tellurium films with a good and sharp TC, about 16 Kelvin, uh, 16 Kelvin and a high JC. So we demonstrated uh, that it's possible to, uh, to, to think about a simple uh, rabbits architecture for uh, process simplification and cost reduction for the one one um, uh, film deposition. Uh, we then, I, I'm now um, saying a few words about our uh, investigation of pinning properties. We tried to combine high resolution imaging with uh, uh, transport properties. 
this is the, for example, the cross view of uh, one of our thin films, uh, iron selenium tellurium on calf samples. Films are of a high degree of epitaxy. Uh, we can see uh, here contrast, uh, contrast image. We, we see contrast from this uh, dark and light um, regions, uh, which is due to different average atomic mass. Uh, so we have bright uh, regions where we have uh, tellurium rich grains. This can be seen from ELS elemental maps also here and dark regions with low atomic mass. Um, that means selenium rich grains. <clears throat> from the top view uh, image, we can see here we have thick regions and thin regions. If we look at one of these thin region here, which are, which are about one grain thick, we can see all these bright filaments, which have a higher effective at atomic mass. Therefore, uh, this is uh, explained with the compositional variation. Therefore, uh, we can uh, see that we have uh, um, high mass walls, which are still superconductors. Therefore, they not obstruct, uh, obstruct uh, um, the current, but uh, the um, composition uh, can vary. Um, from, the, um, from this high resolution image, um, we, we, we can see that we have, again, intensity modulation here due to different stoichiometry. And we have, th this is enlarged here, uh, we have a lattice mismatch between grains with different, um, with different orientations. So we have uh, a tilted and rotated grains. And uh, therefore, this determines here uh, two-dimensional defects at the grain boundaries, which can be parallel to a, a, the AB planes or perpendicular to the AB planes. And we try to correlate, correlate this to the transport the JC properties and the um, pinning. This is the transport JC uh, of the same uh, sample. We can see this is parallel, this is perpendicular to AB, so we have uh, low anisotropy JC, as it was already known. And from the pinning force, we see that direction does not influence the pinning force. This is parallel, this is perpendicular, and the behavior is the same. We have a different trend uh, in temperature. So at uh, temperatures uh, high, let's say close to TC, we have uh, um, a dominant uh, 2D and 1D uh, Pinning, which is due to uh, mean free path um, uh, fluctuation. And this is after fitting and uh, identification of the maximum. While at lower temperature, what is dominant is uh, um, a fluctuation, a pinning due to fluctuation of TC. And therefore, this is related to compositional defects. Uh, this can be correlated with what we saw uh, through TEM. A uh, source of pinning can be the grain boundaries of the uh, shaped rotated grains, as we outlined here, lattice distortion, 2D defects, high mass walls. And this is consistent, uh, let's say, with uh, um, microscopy. Also, from the angular dependence of JC, okay, we saw uh, anisotropy is low, we have this peak parallel to AB. AB planes, uh, which is uh, uh, related to strong pinning. Um, and this can be related to the extended planar 2D grain boundaries parallel to the AB plane. Uh, at uh, high field only here, it emerges a small peak perpendicular to uh, the planes. And this can be related to the smaller grain boundaries uh, perpendicular to AB planes, which so we saw through TEM analysis. <clears throat> And this is also confirmed with uh, the activation energy. We see crossover from uh, low to high field pinning regimes at around two or three Tesla, this is in both directions. So low field, we have single vortex-like pinning regime and we cross to collective pinning regime at higher field. Um, we also performed um, proton irradiation. Um, both uh, to introduce a controlled distribution of defects and also to uh, tune and study the pinning mechanism. Um, so we, we performed several, um, several irradiation with protons. Here I'm, I'm, I'm showing a proton irradiation. Um, 
on different substrates, uh, calcium fluoride and uh, uh, the films grown on with the buffer, and uh, with different energies, which give rise to different uh, depths of the proton uh, implantation, uh, varying from uh, about four to about 90 microns within the substrate. The film is uh, sketched here. So from the behavior of critical temperature and um, critical current of uh, such radiative samples uh, related to the pristine values, uh, we can see that the superconducting properties are only very slightly degraded upon high uh, values of energy or uh, displacement for atom. But um, actually, uh, we have a small increase of JC when the uh, the protons implant very far, uh, very deep in the substrate. Um, so actually uh, the correlation is not with the energy, but more with the implantation depth. And this is also related with the strain. Um, the radiation in fact can increase or decrease the strain, decrease when it's deep in the substrate and therefore high higher is the induced strain in the film, more affected the superconducting properties are. Uh, and this is also um, uh, useful in order to define uh, the irradiation threshold for uh, this phase, which is uh, important when we think about applications like fusion, for example, uh, in, uh, in perspective. Uh, Magnetoctical imaging, just to see that actually um, this uh, phase is very robust against uh, pro um, proton irradiation. This is a pad and this is as grown and this half is irradiated. Uh, we can see optically, but uh, we can see um, that uh, um, both after um, a magnet optical imaging, uh, both in field and in the remnant state, uh, there is no difference between, difference between the two parts. There is no reduction, in fact, in JC. And if we compare with what happens uh, in YBCO, uh, here we have same energy, uh, but uh, almost one order of magnitude less um, displacement per atom. But in this case, in YBCO, um, we, we see that after irradiation, if we increase the DPA, the uh, JC is suppressed. Uh, so iron base very robust against irradiation. Uh, now, just uh, uh, to conclude, I think, uh, just a few words about another kind of measurements we performed in order to uh, study the pinning properties in these uh, um, uh, samples. Um, microwave measurements, they are a different um, technique in order to probe the pinning. So the difference with transport properties is uh, the uh, different time scale we are going to probe. So if we look, uh, if we think about the vortex sitting in a, sitting in a pinning potential, uh, if we apply uh, DC current, we tilt the pinning, we are close to JC, uh, and uh, we have dissipation when we reach JC, and we are, we are going to probe the height of these pinning wells. While um, differently, when we study, when we perform microwave experiments, we, have at, uh, we are at, uh, uh, at currents much, much lower than the uh, critical current density. Therefore, the tilt of the potential is negligible. And we are going to prove oscillations uh, here, uh, small pinning wells. And uh, um, when uh, we uh, calculate the pinning uh, constant, constant, we're going to probe the recall from the potential where the vortex sits inside here. And this is a short time scales, basically. Um, so our colleagues in, uh, at the University of uh, Roma 3, they have performed these measurements. And um, we saw that th these are measurements on a thin film at different uh, temperatures versus field. So we saw that in this uh, region in low field up, up to a few Tesla, uh, we have increase of the pinning constant. And therefore we can uh, say that uh, we have 
um, we have a pinning strength which depends on the vortex density and uh, um, we, we basically have a, a small vortex segments which are individually pinning so single vortex pinning when we go to high field this region here uh, the behavior is different and we can ascribe this to a crossover to, from single here to collective pinning and this is again uh, this has this uh, this peculiar behavior as the one over square root of the uh, magnetic field. And um, this is actually consistent with what we saw uh, from the transport measurements and also uh, correlated with TEM analysis. Uh, if we compare with other materials, we can see that in iron, selenium, tellurium, pinning is stronger than in iodine 13. There is still large room for improvement um, to reach YDCO performances. Actually, we think that we should uh, probe uh, irradiation uh, pinning uh, after, upon irradiation uh, of uh, our samples uh, in order to see what happens. And so I, uh, I'm concluding here uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you much for this very interesting talk and the encouraging results. Um, the paper is open for discussion. Are there any questions in the audience here? Um, I will radiate Dario Baguero. Um, I just uh, missed one, one point. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. And yes, just yes. missed one point. You said that uh, you have an increase in JC when the proton uh, implants in the substrate. Is that right? Yes. So I'm, I'm going back, sorry, on the slide. Uh, so we have, uh, um, when we have high energy, uh, high, uh, sorry. Okay, uh, here, can you, can, can you see my mouse here? So uh, in this case, the case of uh, um, calcium fluoride deep implantation, uh, here we have an increase in JC. While, okay, TC is very, very slightly reduced in any case, this is very, this is just a, a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 Kelvin uh, decrease. While well, we have an increase in JC in this case, decrease in the other cases. So the correlation is more with the implantation depth than with the uh, displacement per atom. Uh, but uh, this occurs only when you have calcium for N2 uh, as a substrate, right? Yes, this, this happens we, in, in this case. We, we didn't observe the same increase in this when we have a um, buffer. Uh, where instead the, the um, critical current density stays the same. Okay, thank you very much. This is consistent with what we have found in other uh, films. Uh, actually, not uh, that, in that case that uh, there were films grown on calcium fluoride substrate, substrate, and we saw that actually the role of the substrate was really dominant, uh, uh, also to determine the degradation of the properties and like the gaps and so on. So, thank you very much. Yes, yes, substrate is, is really crucial. And uh, after, I mean, the, the role also of the strain induced or relaxed in the in the film. And uh, we, we need to perform a TEM on these samples as well to see much more interesting. Okay, is there another question? I don't see any question in the chat. Is this right? No. Yeah, yeah. If not, then. Thanks again, Valeria, and we move on to the next talk.